Welcome to One Million Cups. We'd like to start on time. Uh, so, uh, Lisa, how many times have we not started on time? Uh, never. Never. Maybe. maybe uh, except for last week. Maybe. It's always technical difficulties. Well, no, I mean, it's so basically, you know, I think it's about six times. And I'm, of course, making that up. So, like most statistics, are entirely human. Once was What's that? that correct? <laughs> That's right. I, is, it, is time slowing down? Can I hear that? Okay, fantastic, because I know it's been for me for quite some time, but I am uh, just delaying things, so um, it is time to check in. If you are in-house, you can see these, these wonderful little things here that you uh, you can scan the QR code, you can check in. How many how many pens and notebooks have we given away so far? Like five or six, and I have a whole box for We've got a whole box. There. I never claimed We've got, mine. What's that? I never claimed mine. I've never claimed mine either. I want my notebook. So, and I think you have to be present to actually get the notebook or the pen. We don't actually participate in mailing those kinds of things out. But, uh, but if you can come by and you are eligible for your pen or notebook, um, let's see, it's here on the screen. <laughs> if you are at home, I think you actually have to go to our website. The easy way to get there is 1mcabq.com. If you go there, it'll give you an opportunity to check in as well. Because um, I know sometimes when I look at my screen, I, I try to check in using QR code and it's a little bit uh, glitchy. But let me see. I'm going to try and try and use this thing in advance. It should work. If it, it should, uh, should I, I think you'll wait for that presentation. So the mission of online cups so basically it's to lower the barrier of access to entrepreneurship and entrepreneurial resources around the country. It's uh, put together by the good folks at the Kalpin Foundation who support uh, research and uh, basically development of tools and communities to help support entrepreneurs. Um, throughout the United States. Let's see, national and local mission already started into this, but basically what One Million Cups does is we have a consistent program. Paul, how many of these things, I, I, you're about to have to drink a coffee. How six. many of you, you've been to six? Six different places. And, and they're different, you know, they, they, they do reflect the community you're different in. Different people, but uh -huh. same format and same kind of question. Exactly. So they found this fairly basic format that enables us not to see another pitch competition. We used to have a ton of pitch competitions, don't have too many these days, um, but it gives us an opportunity, it gives uh, people in the community and folks online an opportunity to really learn about, not only about the business, but about the people behind the business. Why did they start it? You know, what are the challenges that they're facing in helping grow their business? I'm jumping all over on these slides here, but uh, let me continue. Uh, but it's, so, it's the same program everywhere, and that helps make it easier if you're a presenter here, we encourage you to check out, is there some other community around the country that might benefit from learning about your company? Are you exploring a new market or something along those lines? Let's see, you're trying one more time. Every time I let someone in, it takes the control away. It takes the picture, control. sorry. <laughs> All right, uh, no, I get that. So um, we are the sole, we are the only location, and in fact, the best location here in New Mexico. Uh, however, we're part of a larger region. If you head just a little bit to the east, you can find plenty of locations throughout Texas and throughout Oklahoma. Um, I think it's a little, there's a few in uh, a few that we actually really like up in uh, Colorado and, and to the west as well. But we're the only location here. So I just want everybody who's here in the house and folks who are online, feel proud of yourselves. Uh, just a nudge. Yeah, yeah, that's it. I, I wish I had. I wish I had my camera up. Um, let's see. Key pillars. So basically, as I mentioned, we look for presentations and not pitches. Pitches is trying to sell you something. What we're trying to do is not just connect with the people in the room, but we're trying to give them a better understanding again of the business and the people behind it. Um, authentic connections. You know, I don't think there's that many of those organizations where you go to a place. I know Lisa and I probably went to Sushi Gig about 4,000 years ago, and it would be like, can I get more than 100 business cards? That was somewhat unpleasant. Um, we don't do that anymore. We're, however, we don't also uh, frown upon handing across the business cards. They are somewhat useful. Um, but we're really looking to uh, really looking to build those authentic connections. Other stuff, 
from the community, by the community. We'll talk a little bit about uh, the different organizers here in just a minute. And we try to be radically and intentionally inclusive. We're trying to uh, you know, encourage other folks who maybe haven't been part of the entrepreneurial world to try and find a way in. It's one of the reasons why we like to have donuts and coffee. You know, just something to help make the morning a little bit easier. If you if you don't necessarily like sitting with people, you can kind of maybe maybe head to the back, <laughs> find your way in in a more comfortable way. Let's see, a couple other things. Our Albuquerque mission. Um, I'm just going to hit one of these things. Uh, what can our community do to help you? That's the question we always ask at the end. This is a question we ask ourselves as organizers and and really the community. How can we really help? <clears throat> the different businesses and the different entrepreneurs, wherever they are in their journey. Some people are just thinking about, you know, maybe I could be an entrepreneur or maybe this idea that I have could be a business. How can we help those folks? There are other folks who are, you know, I'm, I'm kicking butt on this, this and this, but I need a little help with, with the HR. I need a little help with some other kind of service or some other quality that I don't have, some other capability I don't have. So we really want to help all different kinds of entrepreneurs. Let's see, apply to present. We make it as simple as possible. When I say we, I mean other people. <laughs> we, try, we try to make it as simple as possible. If you go to 1mcabq.com, it takes somewhere between like five minutes if you're quick and your computer is you know, well connected and all that, maybe 15 minutes if you give it some thought um, to apply. And what we try to do as organizers um, is to make that easier. Oftentimes, if you're not sure, we ask you to talk with us here, uh, here after One Million Cups, just to kind of talk about, you know, does your company, does the work that you're doing, does that make sense for One Million Cups, or how might we help help you or work with you to help shape your presentation so it connects as best as possible? Let's see. Oh, I recognize some, a few of these people. Let's see. That dude over there, he's wearing a mask, he's wearing a hat, but that good-looking fellow is standing next to a horse over there, that is Paul Sauter. We've got Lisa Atkins, who runs this place. You run how much of New Mexico right now? 12% of New Mexico. Is running. Um, I'm running. Oh, I got to change my slide. I am no longer with North Central. What's that? You're running the other 20%. Yeah, and, and somewhere, somehow it works. Just uh, let's see. We're also, where's Adam's right there. You know, I did not wear a hat in with Lisa, but uh, that's the theme we were trying to go for this morning. We did not coordinate appropriately. Uh, and also we've got Sonia Dewing, who is often, if she's not here, she's probably somewhere else in the world. She's traveling elsewhere. So we try, you know, if you have a question about something that happens in the room, uh, you want to apply to present, you want to make some connections. Those are the kinds of things that we're here for. We're also always looking for other folks to help expand the team. Whether you're an official team member or not, uh, we, kind of, we really try to work with the community and other folks about how can we help promote. We got, you know, Jason over here is is less, he's a sponsor, but he's he's just like, you know, an engaged community member, and hopefully there's some benefit to participating here that, that benefits his business. But I think it, you know, it started from a genuine love for entrepreneurs and people, you know, and and that's the kind of thing that we go for. I, again, I'm all over the place. Oh, speaking of which, oh my heavens, we got that pipe up here. We got Jason Collin Photography, more than organized, is represented right here and right there. Um, in addition to that, we, <laughs> we got GOS Capital, and we've got Noventum, as I was trying to say online, donuts are particularly good. So I encourage you to check those out if you have an opportunity. Um, let's see. And the last thing, I've, I've been running this way too long. I'm going to try and shut up. I'm going to try so that I can hand it off and you can introduce our guests here this morning. Thanks to everyone who's joining us here online and in person. I see Rick out there. That's amazing. Um, and uh, let's see, is who's who's on the hook? I'm going to hand this off to Lisa. We're a little, Sorry. a little constrained on our on our cord here. Just so you know. Let me get your presentation more to my lady. Sweet. How do you? So who? I should ask. There's a couple of questions we sometimes ask. Who in the audience considers themselves an entrepreneur? All right. All right, yeah. And I know there's other people, I know a couple of the people that didn't raise their hands are clearly entrepreneurial. You know, they are, wh whether you're building your own business or you're building something bigger, oftentimes it takes that same kind of entrepreneurial spirit where you're gathering resources and marshalling the different people that you need in order to help grow something. One last question I'll ask before I hand it off to Lisa is, for those of you who are joining us the first time, if you can raise your hands and maybe I just want to learn, you know, what was it that brought you in here today? Come on, raise those hands. 
Uh, is it only one? Oh. I can hear you too. Oh, okay. Yes. You were being shy over there. Okay. Well, is there, can you just tell us what was it that brought you in here today? Um, I just moved here from Kentucky. Yeah. Awesome. And I am currently looking for different opportunities in the career team. Nice. Nice. So I think it's a good spot to start. Oh, but you, you are exactly correct. Thank you very much. I wish we had a rover and camera. I believe you came in with somebody else this morning, sir. <laughs> so we want to thank Gabe, great community member, running a whole bunch of stuff. I'm going to hand this off to Lisa. We'll have you guys come up and do longer uh, introductions in just a bit. But I'm here to introduce the speakers. Lori Kerr and Lisa Jackson, come on up to the stage. They're with Invive Solutions. And they were very kind to me as their coach because I was home um, healing and, and we had a great Zoom session and we had to call each other Lisa J and Lisa A. <laughs> and I would say Lisa, Lisa, yes. and we both go, yes. yes. So welcome. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Thank Good morning. you so much for having us. I am Lori Kerr, and this is Lisa Jackson We're with N5 Solutions. We started N5 Solutions at the end of 2020, and we are already sustainable and growing. And our challenges relate to that growth. <laughs> so our challenges include scaling and adding team members. How do you manage the disruption of onboarding team members? How to continue marketing ourselves when we're busy and then also, how do we convey what we do in a way that resonates? So to tell you a little bit more about us, I'll hand it over to Lisa. Oh, yes, we're going to have to switch here. Yeah. Good, Good morning. Good bad thing about me. <laughs> yeah. There's two of us. Good morning. So I'll start by introducing myself. My name is Lisa Jackson. I'm a licensed clinical counselor and a master's of public health. And I think I was born an entrepreneur. And I like to say that, um, you know, I've always been strategizing and creating and building things. And I was the kid who had side hustles all the time, uh, reading card company, skincare company. And uh, I loved playing retail store as a kid. Who, who, who likes playing retail store as a kid? It was me. So I was a daydreamer. I'm still a daydreamer, but I have now traded in my side hustles for a legit business. Um, I have had other legit businesses as a clinical counselor. I had a private practice, but most of my other side hustles were kind of part-time gigs while I was in corporate healthcare. So I learned a lot of my management and leadership skills in corporate healthcare. Um, I love being an entrepreneur. I'm so, it's the best gig ever, literally. I get to use both sides of my brain. So the creative side and the analytic side and bringing those things together um, in a way of being very intentional, industrious, productive, and really having a lot of fun in the process. And I'll turn it over to Lori to introduce herself. Now hold on to the clicker for a moment. Okay. So again, I'm Lori Kerr. I'm the other co-founder of M5 Solutions. I'm the senior project manager and advisor. Unlike Lisa, I was an accidental entrepreneur. <laughs> Many years ago in my early 30s, I found myself, I knew I was going to be laid off from my job. I was still trying to figure out what I was going to be when I grow up. And then through a request from a friend, it sparked an idea. And I started my first business, Life Simplified, a professional organizing company specializing in small to medium-sized businesses. That was a solo effort for about 10 years. And by the financial by the time of the financial upheaval in 2008, I was floundering, I was burned out, and I was ready for something else. So by a few more, <laughs> a little wandering, and then by 2012, I had discovered project management. And I had earned my first certification as a project manager and gotten my first job in project management at Loveless Health Plan here in Albuquerque. You all remember Lovely, lovely health plan. And fortuitously, on my first day at work at the at Loveless Health Plan, Lisa Jackson also had her first day there. And after two days of employee training, Lisa and I were fast friends. And then 
you know, a few years went by, we both changed jobs, changed companies, and we found ourselves with an opportunity to actually work together. And during that time, it was a multi-year project. And during that time, we found that we not only did we work really, really well together, we complemented each other's skill sets and we had the same values. So during the midst of working together on this multi-year project about midway, this idea started coming together about starting our own consulting business. However, it took a couple of years and then the stars finally aligned at the end of 2020 amidst the COVID pandemic. And we finalized, we put our business together, started networking and N5 was born. So if you just want to stay there. Oh, okay. All right, great. All right. So N5 Solutions empowers health and human services leaders and organizations in bringing their vision and best work forward so they can serve the communities they love. We're a nationally certified women-owned small business, and we provide remote and on-site strategic management project planning, coaching and consultation, program development and implementation support services across the United States. Our niche is really in supporting large scale collaborations and health in, in health and human service and health and human services initiatives. We are also a mission and vision of mission and values driven organization. And I'll turn it back over to Lori to tell you a little bit more about what that looks like in action. I forgot to pass the mic. Can you all hear Lisa okay? Yeah. <laughs> I'm projecting. <laughs> so to illustrate who we are and what we do, let me tell you a story about a project we, we worked on in our first year of business, which was last year. We were hired to provide technical assistance to behavioral health providers to help them with Medicaid billing. Woo, fun. Yeah. <laughs> so through the magic of Zoom, we met with various providers across the state, and we did this remotely for six months. We quickly learned that the typical behavioral health agency is led by someone who's uh, a clinician. They either are a clinician still, or they were a clinician, and they have very little like leadership and business management training. So the Medicaid billing piece was just a really small part of their challenges. So instead of focusing on Medicaid billing, we ended up providing training and membership and leadership development, prior, helping them with the prioritization of competing goals, project management, time management, and delegation support. So the feedback we received from our client was that supporting providers in this way turned out to be the financial knowledge and support that they needed to thrive. So we were on the right track. And the best part is we really loved doing this work, doing that work. So we turned around, we submitted a proposal to the state for a two-year project to provide leadership management and project management training. And we actually, this uh, proposal was recently awarded to us and we're now underway with that project which makes us very happy. So this ends up being a great example of our work because it illustrates that our real expertise is in looking through that entrepreneurial lens and bringing that vision forward. We can see the root cause of challenges and find ways to address this that are creative, compassionate, very thoughtful, and with really our client's success in mind. Great. Um, so you know Lori and I a little bit more now. Um, we have a couple of other folks on our team. Joni Davenport is a project coordinator, and Stephanie Willingham is our virtual assistant. And I guess I will talk a little bit about how we make money. Um, one of my favorite subjects, honestly, um, it kind of falls into my wheelhouse to talk about how we strategize about this. Um, but just to give you a general overview, our billing is all project and deliverable based. We do not bill hourly. 
Um, we do have a few contracts where that happens, but mostly it's project based. So we design our, uh, our contracts based on what the work is that we're going to perform. A lot of our clients are small and medium sized organizations and we rely heavily on state contracts. So presently we work a lot with the New Mexico Department of Health and the Behavioral Health Services Division. Um, we also have done some other subcontracting in Oregon and Tennessee. Um, we have also clients that are private organizations, nonprofits, et cetera. Let's see. Um, in the beginning, in our first year, our typical contract may have been three to nine months. And um, as Lori said, we recently received a two-year contract, and now we've begun to recognize that that's kind of the way that we want to go, our longer-term, uh, larger contracts. And that's part of our growth and scaling strategy. Thank you, Lori. So back to our challenges. Um, so these are balancing our growth, not taking on too much, marketing ourselves while we're busy, managing our business and our clients, growth versus scaling, employees versus contractors, and then again, managing that disruption of onboarding team members. And then again, how do we convey what we do in language that resonates? So again, that's it for us. Thank you so much again for having us. Thank you, Lisa. Atkins and the <laughs> One Million Hacks team for your support. And um, can you give me the last slide, please? So here's our contact information. Feel free to connect with us on LinkedIn or, or through email. And again, thank you so much. We'll take questions from the audience. Just form a line here. We'll also take questions online. Please remember to introduce yourself. Come on up. Hi, I'm Paul Sauter, founder and chief scientific officer of Equiseek. We develop and sell genetic tests for horses. So I want to ask you to talk to this group about growth versus scaling. I haven't heard people discuss that here before. Okay, great. <laughs> Thank you for that great question. Um, this is kind of a new idea for us, um, growth versus scaling. So my current understanding about growth have to use my hands to speak. Um, my current understanding about growth is that your revenue and your expenses are kind of in alignment versus scaling where your revenue increases, but your expenses don't. That's generally a very, very basic idea here. And I'm still learning about this. But for us, we were kind of on a growth trajectory where we were working more, working more, working more, making more money, but working more, working more. So the idea here where, where we're at now is we're starting to raise our rates, look for those larger contracts. We started also working with a profit first consultant for those who aren't familiar. You can ask that after. Yes, <laughs> profit first is phenomenal. <laughs> I highly recommend it. It's been life changing, game changing. Um, and she's helping us to kind of find these benchmarks about what's the minimum we want to charge on a contract if we're doing a month to month versus a year, what's our minimum rate? So that's been very helpful. Did that answer your yes, question? Yes, thank you. That's okay, really great. Thanks, Paul. Hello. Big fan of Profit First. Um, <laughs> Mary Martese Pino with More Than Organized. Um, I'm sure you guys have done this, but again, it might be one of those blank spots when you're doing it for yourself. What do you want your company to be? You said your mission and value driven, so that should right. really inform that growth and scale oh, thing. Yeah. Growth for the sake of growth. Is just going to bring you out. Yeah. Right. So, like, what do you yeah. guys want out of the business? That's great. We actually just had this conversation yeah. in the car this morning. <laughs> and what are we doing? Um, I, the best way I can answer that, I don't know if you if you have a response, but um, the best way that I can answer that right now is that we want to be really mindful about not focusing just on the revenue, and really, what is the quality of life we want to experience as business owners. Um, and when I said we're a values driven organization, um, that really is at the forefront of everything that we do. And that is about creating collaborations, relationships with our clients, with the community, bringing people in the community together. We volunteer a ton of our time just helping connect people and facilitating meetings so that other projects might get off the ground, whether we're part of it or not. Um, and that's about satisfaction, right? Um, for me, that's a driving principle. Do you want to add something to that? From a from a 
business perspective, I think the answer to that is that it is, we're kind of in that conversation all the time and, and that's continually evolving from sort of a visionary magical perspective. What we wanna be is we wanna be a company that transforms healthcare in New Mexico. Um, we want to we want to make everything better. <laughs> everything and <laughs> help just in healthcare. <laughs> just in healthcare. <laughs> with healthcare. Yeah. Start with yeah. Thank you. Just stick with that, and it'll. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Great question. Hey, Monica Poling, Sounding Line Meeting Communication. Thank you. And um, it sounds like you almost have two audiences: the client and then the the health provider. So how do you manage when those are in conflict, or are they ever in conflict? think about that just for a second. Um, very insightful that you pick up on that. And I, I would maybe reframe it a little bit to say that it's our client is the state in this, in most cases, our client is the state, but we're interacting with the community of providers. Um, so far, we haven't found there to be a conflict. Um, most of the time it's in alignment. And I think, again, going back to that vision and mission driven piece, our, our work and our focus is always around aligning people and bringing collaboration. So because we bring that into our work, we're able to help unify those communities, or at least that's our, our effort. So um, thank you for that question. But I would say I don't see necessarily a conflict. Yeah, I mean, you would add with that project I told you about where we kind of pivoted and started doing something a little bit different than we were hired for. I mean, we did help with the Medicaid billing, but it really was <laughs> such a small piece of the problem. Um, if we had, you know, it would have been a, a different outcome if our client had come back and said, hey, you're not doing your job and we really need you to, you know, focus back. Well, you know, things might have changed. We would have, you know, changed course a little bit, but, um, and I think everyone would have been still happy, but it still would not have been as good. So it's, you know, it could be at some point a very much a negotiation of how we're going to make everybody happy. So good, good question. Thanks. I'm Franklin Wilson. I'm an entrepreneur and also operate a private foundation. You're talking about the clinician that was somehow got into the management. Um, and you name some tools that you use, time management. Uh, how do you get feedback about the job that they're doing from the employees? And do you come to a point where that clinician or you guys might realize that <clears throat> they're in the wrong job? It's a great question, Franklin. Thank you for that. Um, it's we have found it's not really our role necessarily to evaluate at that level, or we haven't been asked to do that. We might provide that feedback when appropriate. Um, I think our focus is really how do we empower the people that are in leadership positions to do the best that they can do. Um, and working with the state, right, as part of our state contracts, sometimes we're liaisoning between providers that are not performing and the state who is paying them to perform. Um, and that can be a little trickier. Um, for me personally, it's even more tricky because I'm a licensed therapist. So I have this whole thing around confidentiality and protecting people's privacy in that regard. Um, so I think it's just something we kind of work through when it comes up, but it's not really our role. We're not there to um, monitor or manage at that level. Really, our role is to empower and support and help people thrive in the roles that they're in. I hope that answers your question. That was a good answer, and thanks for expanding it to beyond the individual. To you might be dealing with a, uh, a or you are dealing with a contract or a service provider that uh, I know we can get comfortable using the professionals that I rely on in my business. It's hard to change, but sometimes you have to do that. Um, other question is how small of a company do you actually will you actually work for or take on or sign up for? In terms of contracts? Uh, in terms of number of employees or annual revenue? Um, so 
our smallest contract, I think this is what you're asking, Franklin, our smallest contract is a not-for-profit organization. Uh, they don't have any revenue generating opportunities, so they pay us off of grants. They were our very first client almost two years ago, and we still provide services for them, um, but um, we're hoping to hand some of that off. Um, they're not really, they're not a business, they're a nonprofit yeah. and they have a board of directors, no employees. So we kind of are in lieu of employees. Yeah. I mean, it really just depends on if we can help them, if our services are a match and if, and if they can afford the fee, obviously. Yeah. I mean, like Lisa said, we do, you know, donate some of our time, in, but um, uh, where that, where that's also needed and that's good, but just, you know, just a bit. There's no limit. There's no limit. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Franklin. Good morning, Michael. Hi, Lisa. Good morning. Good to see you up here. Uh, we met, of course, through a project that you guys were working on with the New Mexico Telehealth Alliance, right? Um, it's great to see you up here. Um, I'm here. Uh, congratulations, by the way. I hear a lot of good things. I love what I'm hearing about profit first. Uh, I want to say that hiring an assistant, I think, is really smart. I think that that's a huge mistake that a lot of entrepreneurs make postponing that so i think that's great that you're doing that even if it's just a virtual contract yeah. basis i think that's a huge key to scaling that a lot of entrepreneurs miss and postpone so i think that's great um a lot of people say that uh consulting companies like yours just can't scale um i don't think that's true and i think you've avoided another great thing that i heard you've avoided the biggest throttle for scaling a consulting company hourly billing yeah. i'm really glad to hear you're not doing that um and i hope that you will get rid of those hourly billing clients and, and graduate We're them to, to yes. the yeah. correct business yeah. model. So I think that's great stuff. Um, so my question, it connects with scaling. It also connects with your, your need to be able to add on team members and train team members. Have you identified any opportunities for products or productized services that your clients need? Are there any common needs, common uh, assessments or analysis or, or evaluations that need to be done with sort of a standardized deliverable, a standardized report that everybody needs that can be packaged up, still requiring you know, some expertise and some sure, consulting, sure. but uh, in a way that you can start leveraging um, uh, maybe some repeatable IP, yeah. um, some of the language that you, you, that you use in your reports. I imagine reports are a big part of your deliverables. Right. You know, what can you do? Have you, have you thought about anything where you can create sort of a product mm -hmm. that is being delivered to multiple clients Again, that also makes it easier to train up a new person on right. delivering a product. Right. Very good point. Um, maybe it has passed through our, our it's been part of our conversations in the last two years, but uh, we haven't thought about it seriously uh, at all. But that's a very, very interesting point. Very good point. Yeah, that's, it is an excellent point. I was actually just thinking about that this morning on my drive into town. Um, one of the things that we are doing for a current project are producing some videos, some training videos. And so that may be a potential venue in the future to offer. Um, but beyond that, no, and we'll give some definite thought to that. Very insightful. Thank you, Michael. Really appreciate it. Thanks. We've got one comment, one question online with Bill. I didn't see any others. And if anybody else from the room has got a question, please go ahead and line up for the last round. So, oh, we've, we've got all sorts of stuff going on screen. Sorry. <laughs> no My son's texting me. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> Bill, you want to time in there? Okay, I'm there. Hi, Laurie. Hi, Lisa. Um, sorry, I can't be with you. Uh, I think I remember seeing you guys before. Um, so I was interested in, uh, my question is that kind of following on a little bit from what Michael just asked you. You were talking about growth. And what I heard was that you're measuring your growth against your revenues and your expenses, which is kind of um, a sensible thing to do. All right, just to make sure you're not pushing yourself um, to excessive limits. And then I, I wrote down the question, which said, well, okay, how do you then analyze your markets for growth? And then I said to myself, well, how do you seek out new markets that would be that would benefit from your skill sets? And that's not primarily just looking at 
a, a revenue income on a cost base that's saying well, you've got certain skill sets, you're um, a strategic organization. I'm assuming you want to widen your net. So how are you looking at um, analyzing the market and see what potential customers are out there um, versus just sticking with what you know in maybe a medical field or what you're specializing in? Thank you, Phil. Great question. I, I'd like to give more thought to that, but I will say, um, Gory, Gory will take that. <laughs> <laughs> that's why we're a partnership. <laughs> that's right. Exactly. Exactly. Back to my organizing business and doing that for 10 years all by myself, that was never going to happen again. Uh, uh, that was just too much, too many decisions for one person. Um, and, and that is such a great question, Phil. And so here's where we're thinking is during, over the summer, we actually went to a healthcare conference in Colorado with the intent of not just connecting with people, but also just feeling out the market in Colorado. Um, if we're doing a lot of virtual work in New Mexico, why couldn't we do that in another state? And Colorado happens to be a state both of us have lived in. So there's a little familiarity. The other um, way we're sort of expanding our thinking and in, in what kind of um, organizations we can serve is through an Albuquerque connection and uh, a foundation that was started here in uh, in New Mexico, we were able to work on a project in Tennessee, again, virtually, fantastic project. We had a great time with that project and that was not behavioral health related, that was actually around um, poverty alleviation. And so there, it's possible that through those connections, we could be hired, uh, to work on further projects that are similar to that. And, um, you know, if, I mean, I guess our focus now is more like dipping our toe into the water in Colorado. Uh, and we'll just see how kind of, <laughs> we'll see how that evolves over time. Um, right now, again, we're, uh, we're busy for a while. So, uh, but that's kind of always part of our conversations is what's next. Does that answer your question? Um, kind of. It's 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 great that you're busy for a while, but for a while, time runs out. Okay. Yeah. Um, I do have some greater insights into how you probably could expand, and I'll be happy to chat with you um, offline about that. Um, as Paul and uh, Eric and a few others will probably tell you, I'm in the strategic business, and I'm actually. Well, I'm not there now. I'm actually building a new company over here in New Mexico, which maybe I'll present at One Million Cups in Albuquerque sure. sometime. But um, I, I think there are some uh, poignant areas that you should consider in how you look for other business. And I'll be happy to um, contact with you after and have a, a quick chat about that. We'll take you up on that, Phil. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, one thing that this morning that I thought was kind of like that, we had a discussion with some other investors, and one of the things, have you set an exit goal for where you want to be? And uh, measuring growth should be against that exit, uh, because growth is going to fluctuate, but is it climbing up to that exit? That's a great question. And actually, I'm really struck by all the questions we've had this morning. These were conversations we were either having in the car this morning or things we've been thinking about. So thank you all for bringing these forward. Um, exactly to that point, hiring the profit first consultant with it, it, the exact method in which we are uh, utilizing that in order to move toward that goal. Um, we're both, uh, well, I don't need to get into how old we are. But we're both at the point in our careers where looking at that exit strategy is really important to both of us. Even um, though it's a long way. <laughs> longer for you. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's a, it's a great thing to consider. And, and that is definitely top priority right now for us in the midst of you know, how we're planning growth and strategy. Um, it's also about our exit planning for sure. So 
Thank you. All right. We've already got the group questions, ladies. Okay. The next question, red or green? <laughs> Christmas. I know that's like the cop out answer, right? No. <laughs> red, a little bit more. <laughs> 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 And what's the one thing that this community can do for you? For me, I would really love to find a way to succinctly describe what we do in a way that resonates for people. Um, that has been a challenge for me personally. So, um, and and I think just asking great questions like Bill uh, and you know, and we very much appreciate the offering a little bit of support and and your expertise. That's, that's 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 gold cool right there. So we really appreciate that. Awesome. Thanks, ladies. Great job. So I know we have some newbies. I'd like you to come up here and we'll have you introduce yourself to the group as well. Come on up. That's you and you. And how about the gentleman behind there? Have you ever been here? You've been here before. Okay, come on. Come on up. So introduce yourself, explain again why you're here, because there might be people in the audience who can help you. Great. Great. Stand over a little bit more so they can see online. Uh, hi. Uh, my name is Hannah Howard. And like I said uh, briefly, I just moved here. My um, husband is a filmmaker, so moved to Albuquerque. Um, I was working for the University of Texas at Dallas before we left. And Loved my job. I was sad to see uh, that I had to leave it, but now I find myself kind of at a crossroads. Um, I have a awesome hobby of stand up comedy, so I do that, but that does not pay my bills. Um, and I also really love people and I love small businesses and startups and co working spaces. I just love the energy and the culture and uh, I was an event coordinator before um, COVID, so um, trying to get back into something like that and being available for startups is something I'm really passionate about. So that's why I'm here. Thank you. That's a good tip. Thank you so much. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Welcome. All right, my name is Jason Burnett, uh, friends with Gabe. Um, I am currently in a career transition. I've been working um, in churches for the last uh, 20 years. And so I'm getting out of that and into either nonprofit or for profit, not sure which yet. Um, my master's is in, from UT Dallas um, in organizational development and leadership. And so I'm looking for things. Um, kind of in the strategic management and leadership kind of world. Um, kind of similar stuff to what you're doing, um, but not, not that I don't have any healthcare experience. Um, I've seen counselors, but I uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, haven't managed it. So. Um, but uh, it, anyway, so I, I, I really am drawn into the nonprofit world, though. I'm just from, from a, a sense of, of purpose and um, for those organizations, right? And so trying to find ways to help them. Um, a lot of my work has been in um, turnaround for, for a church, uh, real estate and uh, selling a property and, and building a new building and kind of changing organizational culture. So um, really, really passionate about organizational management and kind of that leading, leading change um, is kind of where I'm headed. So I don't have my elevator. <laughs> I'm still winding no, around. Good. So anyway, that's all right. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, my name is Haas. Uh, have you uh, any of you heard of uh, Fondaxi? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Great. Yeah. Uh, Adam actually invited me. So that's one of our uh, newest uh, projects. We started it right before the pandemic. Uh, and uh, I am actually I'm a civil engineer. But I've been in the hospitality industry for the past 40 years. Uh, we run a group of restaurants called Pizza Nine Hospitality Group, which is Rebel Burger, Pizza Nine, Cello. So we love it. We have a passion for food. Uh, I've opened restaurants in many places in the world. 
recently, a few months ago, we opened a restaurant in Sweden, a Pizza Nine in Stockholm. So oh, that's kind of, uh, I enjoy uh, doing that, but you know, uh, based on the, the need of uh, restaurants, getting a platform uh, to get uh, uh, new guests, new customers at a lower, price, uh, lower cost, we started Fondaxi, which is, uh, I would call it a customer acquisition platform. So restaurants on a given night, if Friday night they are doing $10,000, but Monday they're doing 2000, they can, we, we are a matchmaker between that cause related marketing and or the nonprofit with the particular uh, part restaurant and they will uh, donate part of their proceeds to that organization. Anywhere from 10% to we have Bob from Kolachi factory who donates 100%. So if you take your group in there on a Tuesday night and he approves, then he'll write you a check for the total amount the next day. So it works really well because it brings them new customers. Uh, a Fondaxi customer is a philanthropic customer. Uh, so they're paying full price. If they like what they see, they come back again and they do that. So we love that part. Another part we're doing with the uh, Fondaxi is uh, we, are, we have a group of networking uh, groups, chapters. And we have about uh, four or five chapters right now set up here. So we are systemizing uh, what I'm sure you have all probably heard of BNI, what BNI does, except our, uh, our people, they would be donating. They have to make a donation to the cause of that guest, that customer. So if they hire an attorney from the platform or from the group, they have to make a donation of 10 bucks, 20 bucks, or a percentage to the charity of their choice. Very unique, everything is intellectually property protected. Uh, we have spent a lot of money. I have a great team. So, so watch for us. Sounds like we should get a presentation. Well, yeah, when sometime. are you gonna present? <laughs> <laughs> we got Bill on the shout out. I had to Yeah, and uh, Zach, where are you? Did you wanna come up and yeah. say something? Hey, Bill, go ahead and uh, unmute. You can give your shout out. Yeah, I just wanted to say, um, and I think I've said this uh, before, that uh, the Albuquerque team there that puts together One Million Cups is really doing well, all right? And, and the reason I'm saying this again is because this morning I had logged on to New York. Well, I would like to have not logged on to New York, all right? And there was nobody there because they don't have anybody. And I'm actually signed in with these guys and I'm actually trying to find some help into getting some people to present and I've got a couple and in fact uh, Ingela from last week um, she and I have had uh, conversations on other things and she's willing to come over and, and, and do a presentation here so so then I said okay if there isn't Albany then I'm going to go to New York New York so I go down to New York New York all right and guess what they only do it on the third Wednesday of every month and no. this this is the third Wednesday of every month. And whilst I got the link, I couldn't get the password to get in. So they didn't make it easy. So then I said, okay, let me go to Boston. So I went to Boston, all right, to get onto One Million Cups. And Boston only meet once a month and their uh, scheduled date isn't until next uh, month. So I obviously missed them. So you guys are really lucky. You get something every week, embrace it, support it and make sure you, you enjoy it and and i hope you guys stay in line because otherwise i'm going to be totally frustrated and a flag to present so we can introduce the show that would be so generous thanks bill uh yeah i'm zach azar software engineer entrepreneur uh just a couple quick shout outs so for the fat pipe members uh, i just created an entrepreneurship and small business slack channel so i'm hoping to get a community into Slack to be talking about sharing our victories and struggles and asking for help. And uh, yeah, so just kind of forming a community to support each other. So if you're at that pipe, you're on Slack, entrepreneurship and small business. Um, second one's a quick plug. I'm doing um, some user research for people who write on Twitter, like long form content. So if anybody in here does that, please come find me afterwards because I'm trying to build tools to make your life easier. So uh, <laughs> Zach, thanks. Oh, All right. yes.
Let's see. I sometimes have these and sometimes I don't, but I would just want to share a handful of events uh, and activities that are going on. Um, I got all sorts of notes from, from the presentation. Great presentation today. So thanks very much for, for joining us. Um, let's see, tonight, this afternoon and evening, Santa Fe Innovates is hosting with the Creative Santa Fe a future responsible entrepreneurship in Santa Fe event. But really the mission that they're talking about with uh, also with New Mexico for Good a program out of UNM Anderson is how do we grow responsible entrepreneurship throughout the whole state? So if you're around at 5.30 p.m., and I'll put this, I think, for Meetup, that's probably the most effective channel that I've got um, to, to get the word out there. But that's from 5.30 p.m. in Santa Fe. Also tonight, this is online uh, with UNM Anderson, is uh, Crypto Conversations. So cryptocurrency, it's a real thing, apparently. You know, we, <laughs> the block fiesta that we did, like, that we started was probably a little early stage, but now it's uh, very, very much a thing. Uh, so you've got, I want to say, Riley White, great, great professor at uh, UNM Anderson. He's got a session that's online, a UNM living room discussion, I want to say, although it is online, and that's from 6.30 p.m. A couple other things to share. New Mexico startup office hours is next Friday. That's the 19th, and that's from Activate New Mexico. That runs from 1 to 2.30 p.m. Well, I'm spacing on the guy's name, but Muse Biz. Uh, they presented here uh, eons ago, <laughs> before uh, before COVID and all that kind of good stuff. Um, Christina Trujillo, who I'm trying to get in here, she's like a multifaceted entrepreneur. I don't think she's presented here, or at least not recently, with T Neuro of Pharma. It's been several years. It's been several years. It's about time, yeah. Because I know she's got like some side hustles that are about the size of most people's regular hustles, so yeah. it's pretty good. Um, anyway, she's talking with Kick-Ass Entrepreneurs. That's Thursday, uh, September 8th in Santa Fe. And the last thing I wanted to share is Experience IT from New Mexico Tech Council. Big full-day event, lots of good stuff happening. Um, Dale Decker's keynote speaker. Just anything that's going on around innovation and technology, that's with New Mexico Tech Council, and that is on September 21st. I think that's all I've got. I have two more. Oh, sweet. So I mentioned this last week, I think, or two weeks ago, uh, we have a bioscience center at that pipe workshop. This one will be in person at the bioscience center on August 30th. Um, and it's Sarah Bozois. Did I say it, Bob? Bois Vert. I need to like inscribe that on my hand. Um, but she came up with a new evaluation model for startups. Um, so we'd love to have you there. It's on um, Eventbrite and I can, and it's also on our website. I can provide you a link to register. And then one that's not on the website just yet, but coming in September 22nd, the USPTO is actually going to be in Albuquerque, and we're providing uh, three professionals from the USPTO will be doing a one-hour workshop, and then they're providing 25-minute one-on-one sessions. You have to register for the one-on-one -on -one sessions with me, um, and you also have to register for the event. We have limited capacity at the Biosync Center, for, so if you want to go to that, you need to get registered um, and join us for that. Uh, Paul, you want to yeah. shut us down? <laughs> shut us down! <laughs> shut us down. Actually, I'm here to lift us up. Yay. I think you've seen during the course of this hour that there are plenty of people in this room that have can direct you to people and resources that you have no idea how to get to. And you see that whenever people present, people offer those suggestions. And when people come up and introduce themselves in a minute, they also get those suggestions. So um, try to be that helpful person. And if you're in a world of hurt and you're an entrepreneur, consider presenting at One Million Cups because you can see what the outcome is. So let's lift up entrepreneurship in New Mexico. We'll see you all next week. Yeah.